press conference for Warhawks, Pat the Bruiser, and Cross Harris Kelly. I'm joined by the Fight Council members, Justin Idle, Boomer Payne, and Paul Atlas. But first, let's hear from the victorious team of Warhawks. Ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, we came here on a mission to prove to you that we are the most dominant tag team that Fight Underground has to offer. The good guys, while tough, didn't last very long. We are here to send a message. We have 330 pounds, 280 pounds. We're here to make a statement. Anybody, step up. No matter where you're from, no matter who trained you, no matter who you think you are, that's what we have to say. Let's get a question from Justin Idol. Without a doubt, the most intimidating tag team in the fight underground. My question for you guys is, after that great, incredible victory, what are you guys planning on doing with the next 24 hours? <laughs> Quick celebration, mm -hmm. but then it's back to the grind. We watch everything. We watch everyone. everyone. Every day we take a step to getting better and better so we can eventually prove and say and know for a fact that we are the most dominant. We are the best tag team that best. Fight Underground has to offer. We stay ready. Next question is from Boomer Payne. Guys, congratulations, one and zero. You guys are uh, definitely impressed, uh, myself uh, especially. Uh, my question is, you guys seem hungry, you guys seem determined. How are you gonna keep that momentum going? <laughs> because we don't stop. We never stop. For six years, we haven't stopped. Pandemic didn't stop us. Injuries haven't stopped us. So do you think the locker room is gonna stop us? <laughs> no. No one's going to stop us. We're going to continue to do what we do. Do what we do. <laughs> Next question. And the last question is from Paul Alice. Gentlemen, congratulations on being one and all here in Fight Underground. Now, if you've been following the council meetings, you know I know a thing or two about tag team wrestling. As a matter of fact, I made my name on it. And I've gone out on a limb, dare I say, and compared you to a much bigger version of a little tag team I used to know named the wrong crowd. Now, this is lofty expectations that I have for you gentlemen. What do you intend to do to meet my expectations? <laughs> Should we tell them? Absolutely. Give away a little bit of our secret here. We take from every team that we face. We take from the great tag teams of the past. We learn from our mistakes to get better, to improve. We come with a game plan. We step up when it's time to step up, step win or lose. Up. But we plan on winning. And if we do lose, you just added fuel to the fire, as cliche as that may be. We will not stop until we are the best. Okay, Warhawks being successful in the ring, you've obviously impressed the Fight Council. And one thing that stuck out to me was the fact that you guys have been together for six years, and it seems like that devotion to the team is really paying off for you. So far, so good. Fight Council gave us praise. We didn't just come here for praise. We came here for advice. We came here to learn. We came here to get better. And that's what we're going to do. So roster, fight underground, pay attention, because we're just getting started. <laughs> this is the post-fight press conference with the good guys. We are joined by Fight Council members Paul Atlas, Boomer Payne, and Justin Idol. But first, we'd like to get comments on the good guys on your loss today to Warhawks. Ultimately, we underestimated Warhawks. We know they're two big guys, but you know, we legitimately just did not think they were going to be able to beat the good guys. I mean, it's we're the best. Like it's, but we, we came up short this time. We we fell, we just we fell short. Yeah, yeah, we lost. We lost. 
Let's start with a question from Paul Atlas. All right, yeah, exactly. You lost. You call yourself the good guys, but you lost. You are zero and one in fight underground. And like we said, wins and losses matter, gentlemen. What are you going to do to reprove yourself? Wins and losses do matter. They matter. But hey, this this just the first fight. Just the first fight. So always another fight. Next time, work a little harder. Kick a little more butt. Punch a little more. Kick. Every great fighter takes losses. Every championship team, they, they have their losses. I mean, this is our time to go back, draw up a new game plan, and just come out stronger, fighting harder. Let's get a comment from Boomer Payne. Uh, guys, zero and one is your record by your own admittance. You took more loss lightly. You do not uh, have the proper preparation. Uh, is this a sign of what you guys are about? No, a uh, lack of preparation, or, or is this excuses? No, I don't, I don't think this is a sign of what we're about at all. I think, you know, Brett and I, we like to have fun. We like to have fun. We took this as, you know, this is just another wrestling match. But then we learned, fight underground. It's different. This wasn't just a regular wrestling match. We underestimated Warhoss. We won't do it again. Right? At the end of the day, we didn't do our due diligence. We didn't take the time to really dive deep, look at everything that Warhoss is about, learn about Crosshairs Kelly, learn about Pat the Beat Bruiser. We just, we didn't do what was important, and it's, by my own admittance, a lack of judgment, a mistake of poor character. And it's just something that, as the good guys, we cannot do going forward. And let's wrap up with a question from Justin Idol. Yeah, after that huge loss, declaring you guys zero and one, what I want to know is, what are you guys going to do with your next 24 hours? Next 24 hours, we're going to go back and get the footage, look at what we did wrong, where did we slip up. You know, we're going to look at Zach's punches, his kicks. We're going we're to look to see where can he be the most effective, where can Brett Knox, where can I be the most effective. What can we do collectively as a tag team to just earn that number one spot? You're own one now, but there's a lot of matches ahead of us, a lot of fights coming up, and you know, there's only one guarantee that's we're going to go and we're going to work harder. You're so good with words. So good. You've heard from the Fight Council. We know how strong the competition here is in Fight Underground, but we're also learning that the expectations are very, very high. What can we expect from you guys to live up to your name as the good guys? It's, it's no secret that from the beginning, the Fight Council has always said we need to prove ourselves. You know, and we get it. We get it. We've only been around for a while. We've only been tagging for a year. And half of that year, I mean, COVID-19, it's, it's, no. it's put us back a little bit. Right now is the time to go train a little harder, get a little bigger, zap, get a little slimmer, and we're just going to have to come out here fight. We're going to hit the gym. we run some ropes. Yeah, eat better. No more talking about it. I can't do talking about it. Maybe Let, a little less beer. Less gum chewing, but yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Thank Thank you. Thank you. This is the post-fight press conference for loss prevention, and we are joined by fight council members Bubba Brewer, Stacey Hunter, and Brandon Kay. But first, let's hear from loss prevention about his win over Tad Jarvis. I don't know what questions you could possibly have for me. I'm pretty sure I just answered every question you could ask with that match that just took place last night. Now, I'm sure Jar Jarvis got a lot of potential, but he was he was put in a bad spot. That would have happened to anybody who got in a ring with me yesterday. Anybody. And that's all I got to say about that. What do you say, uh, Brandon Kay? So you did come out there and you crushed him in 90 seconds. Now, Tad is good. He has a lot of potential, like you said, but he's young. Do you think you're going to have that kind of intensity, that kind of success against someone with a little more uh, meat on their bone, so to speak? Um, instead of 90 seconds, maybe 120 seconds. How about you, Stacy? Well, Tad seemed to be a little bit more concerned with fans and followers and whatever else. When you have an opponent that is completely focused on you, do you still think it's going to be a minute 30? I'm going into every single match while I'm here at Fight Underground expecting to win. I don't care how long it takes, I expect to win my match. And let's wrap up with Bubba Brewer. Congratulations on your victory. Thank you. It was powerful. Your finisher is something else. 
Can you elaborate on your finisher? And do you think you can do that if you ever face for a lead? My finisher is called Lights Out. It's a setup like an inverted DDT into a suplex, into a stunner. And yes, I think I could do that to Brahimoth. I think I could do that to anybody that steps in the ring with me. Lost prevention, you were very successful in the ring. You obviously impressed the fight council. I know you're a very meticulous man. You have things planned out on your board. How far do your plans go? How much have you planned for your future fight? Well, I'll be really honest. I'm not here to make friends. And I'm not, nothing I do here is personal. It's all strictly business. I'm not going to stop till I get to the top. The only thing I want to, the only promotion I want to deal with is fight on the ground. Until I reach the, the top of fight on the ground, my job here will not be done. Right, thank you. Thank you. This is the post-fight press conference with Tad Jarvis. I am joined by fight council members Bubba Brewer, Stacey Hunter, and Boomer Payne. But first, let's hear from Tad Jarvis about his match against loss prevention. I really have nothing much to say. I, you know, I gave it my all. That's the most that I could do. And the thing is, after I came out of training, Brandon Kay always told me, you fight with everything you got, you have heart. So, that's what I did. I gave it my all. It's, it's the least I could do. So. Why don't we begin with Stacey Hunter? You gave it your all. You got defeated in under two minutes. Do you think maybe you should quit worrying about your followers and worry more about what's going on in the ring? With all due respect, yes. But my fans are also what also created me as well. You know, they gave me also the motivation, and, and my fans also are a big part of me. Um, but I will tell you this, if you give me a chance, I will study film, I will watch everything, and I will give 100% every time. I, I'll give it my whole 100% with studying. Oh, I'm, I'm ready right now. I Go ahead, Bob. I've been sitting back listening. You're sitting there holding your phone. You just got your ass beat out there, and you're worried about your fans. You need to worry about what you need to be here and fight on the ground. You understand me? Yes, sir. I, what and are you going to do about it for your next match? I, I'm, I'm going to focus more on my wrestling. i got to focus on my opponents. And I'm seriously going to do everything I can to prove that I can stand with these guys, these, these bigger monsters within fight, you know, underground. So I'm going to show everything that I got for you guys and as well for myself and my followers. Let's wrap things up with Boomer Payne. You say that you were not prepared. You say that uh, you're worried about your followers and your fans. Uh, were your followers and fans in that ring when you took that beating? No, they weren't. No. So do, do we see something kind of gelling here? Yes, sir. Worry I... more about the fight ahead of you. Yes, sir. I understand. I, I do got to focus on my opponents coming up other than my followers. But if, like I said, you give me the opportunity to continue on here with Fight Underground, I'm going to study film. I'm going to, you know, try to outsmart my opponents. I'm going to be the bigger guy here with Fight Underground. Can I say Underground. one more thing before you leave? Of course. Next time you do an interview, you put your phone down. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll make sure that I get it. Put it down now. And make sure you don't have it anymore. Yes, sir. Do you mind if somebody else would record it for me then? I don't care what they do. Next time, don't have your phone when you're doing interviews with the fight cops. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, and sir. maybe next time your match will be longer than your interview. Yes, ma'am. Will do. Well, Tad Jarvis, I know things didn't really go great in the ring or from the fight council, but I'd like to let you tell me how your social media followers help you and how they do build you up. Because obviously, obviously, that's a big part of you. You're right, you know, and it, it is a big part of me because, you know, these guys, they group me on, you know. I like to show these guys that I can do anything as well as they can. And being a social media inspiration to these guys, I can show them that nothing's impossible. So now that I know I gotta focus on my wrestling from the fight council, I gotta focus on that. But my followers know that I'm not gonna do that.